Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we'll be discussing a case of a pregnant female who presented to us with complaints of generalized tiredness. Uh, to be noted here is that she is a case of sickle cell anemia. Can we begin, sir? Yeah. So, a, th uh, a 28 year old female patient who was on her 31st week of pregnancy, a known case of sickle cell anemia, presented to our ER with complaints of generalized tiredness, basically fatigue. Uh, and dysuria complaints. Uh, in our initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious oriented, talk, uh, obeying to our commands. In our primary survey, airway wise, patient's airway was patent, uh, no increased secretions or anatomical deformity that was noted. Breathing wise, patient had a uh, normal vesicular breath sounds upon auscultation with errantry being bilaterally equal. She had a respiratory rate of 24 cycles per minute, maintaining saturation of 99% in room air. Circulation wise, all peripheral pulses were palpable with a heart rate of 110 beats per minute, but it was regular in rhythm and blood pressure of 120 over 70. Uh, then uh, disability wise, patient had a full GCS score of 15 over 15 with pupils being symmetrically reactive to light about 2.5 mm in size. Uh, exposure wise, she was uh, not febrile with a blood pressure, uh, body temperature of 98.7 degree Fahrenheit maintaining GRBS of or blood sugar levels of 145 milligram per deciliter. Okay, so here the patient was reasonably stable but in general what are the uh, special concerns we will have once we know that the patient is term? Sickle cell. No, no, no in pregnant. term pregnancy. Yeah. Oh, and in, term pre in spe specifically to airway assessment, breathing and circulation. So, pregnancy. Uh, you can tell one by one. Okay. Airway wise, patients, air, uh, um, it, uh, even though it, it appears to be patent, it can co get compromised at any point in time because they will have increased secretions and then. Uh, what? Mm. Edematous. Yeah, uh, oral cavity can be edematous, tongue can have an edema and then hyperemia will be there. So, they have increased uh, uh, friable, uh, the, the vessel's friability increases. So, chances of um, bleeding in exponentially increases in cases of, uh, in, in pregnant cases. And then their uh, sphincters will be lax. So, chances of, uh, um, what is that, aspiration will be high. And uh, um, so, so this then respiratory rate, the uh, respiratory alkalosis can be seen because they'll, they'll have uh, um, the tidal volume increases. Uh, then, then what else happens? So basically, coming to the airway, patient will be having a friable and an edematous. That's airway. okay. That she told. Yeah. Yeah. And the breathing part, patient will be having a baseline, maybe a higher respiratory rate because Acne of her gravid uterus pressing, pressing mm. over her uh, upper thorax. Mm. And also, when we are going to intubate the patient, there will be difficulty because the gravid uterus again can press over the vena cava, causing supraventricular compression. So we have to uh, obtain go for a lateral position or maybe okay. manually push the gravity uterus to the side to pre prevent hypotension. Okay. So, anytime the patient is going bad, we have to always consider this aspect because the patient can, uh, the things can get complicated because of her uh, gravity uterus pressing on the uh, vena cava and also this respiratory complications. Okay. So, the you are happening. receiving the patient itself. Yeah. See that the patient is lying down in the comfortable yeah. position. Yeah. Yeah. That will uh, avoid all the respiratory embarrassment also. Mm -hmm. And also, every intervention we have to assess both the mother and the child also. We have exactly. to <coughs> continue stockography monitoring from the initial stage itself so as to make sure the child is also okay with the medications everything which we are giving. Yes. So, when a patient is coming to ED, we have to check the vitals both of the mother and the child and also we continuously monitor the whole time the both they are in the ER. Mm. So, uh, de decreased apnea time also so yeah. chances So, always can factor have... in the normal physiological variations which, which will happen for the patient. That's mm. a key message. Okay, mm. fine. And the patient has hypertension, like he says, he had to shift the uh, gravid uterus to the left, yeah. Yeah, mm. to the left side so that the iota will compression is reduced and patient's PP will pick up. Okay. If left lateral is not possible, then a wedge has to be kept on the right side. So at least there is a tilt on the left, uh, towards the left side. So uh, this would be our initial assessment. Then as a primary adjunct here, there wasn't an indication for any immediate indi indication for a adjunct so to that. Findings. See, when uh, there is a necessity for an, any intubation, mm -hmm. emergency or elective, see, we have to have a 
appropriate size endotracheal tube and little smaller sizes also. There may be vocal cord edema also. So the, what do you expect that may not be, mm. be able to be passed inside? Okay. Yes. So, uh, only ECG was taken, sir, because her heart rate was 110. So, we had to check the rhythm, even though it was regular upon uh, uh, on examination wise. So, ECG just showed sinus tachycardia. Uh, there was no significant STT changes that were noted. And uh, moving on to the sample history, she is a 31, uh, she was a 28 year old you female. Blood gas was taken or? Uh, blood no. gas did not show any acid base no, derangement as such. It was taken. Uh, it was just to check the lactate levels and any um, acid base derangement, any hemoglobin drop because patient is sickle cell anemia, so the chances of hemolysis will be high. And we had to rule out um, uh, sickle cell related complications in a female, so, so which is why it was taken. It was 10.2. Okay. Fine. Um, so. Uh, then moving on to the sample history, she is a 28 year old female patient who was diagnosed to have sickle cell anemia at the age of 4 years. So she at that point in time presented with dactylitis and joint pain and upon investigations she was found to have sickle cell with a strong family history that her first cousins and uh, maternal grandparents were uh, my grandmother had um, sickle cell anemia. So ever since that age she has been put on folic acid and hydroxyurea and uh, apart from this she has hypothyroidism and she is on thyronom 75 microgram uh, tablet that she takes. Okay. So uh, yeah. since she is already on hydroxyurea what, what change will you make once we, we know that she is pregnant? So in hydroxy area, so the, there are very few clinical studies that have been done, but in whichever animal studies that have been performed, hydroxyurea has shown to produce any uh, congenital anomalies. So even though there is no much evidence backing it up, it is prudent to stop hydroxyurea three months before conception. Okay. So, okay. And with folic acid? A folic acid can be continued. Same dose uh, or increased dose? Uh, normally we give 0.4 mg in a day. This up to 0.8 mg per day you can increase because patient again will be prone to neural tube defects. The fetal will be prone to neural tube okay. and, defects. Uh, and, and the common practice is, is to give an oral line tablets here. Uh, uh, actually in sickle cell anemia it's a misconception that patient will have iron deficiency anemia unless it is documented iron deficiency anemia most of the sickle cell patients will have normal iron levels. So in fact some of them will even be on iron chelators. So even that has to be stopped before pregnancy because again increased risk of congenital anomalies and they will have normal iron, most of them will have. So that has to be first checked before starting the patient on iron supplements. Okay. Hydroxyurea, how long will you stop? Uh, three months before conception, sir. No, that is uh, starting, ending. How long after the delivery? Like as long as he is in the lactation period, it has to be when stopped. the child is getting the mother's weight, don't start it. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, along with this, the patient was already put on uh, Ecosprint uh, 75 mg that she was taking in a day. So, these were her current medications. So, before when she planned her pregnancy, right from that time, prenatal genetic counseling, all of that has to be given. Ideally, because uh, sickle cell complicates pregnancy both for the mother and the fetus. So, right from the time of conception, even when you are planning pregnancy, patient has to be counseled from then and the husband has to be checked for any genetic dis uh, disability. The fetus also has to be checked for any uh, uh, genetic uh, abnormalities like uh, f from the time of conception and then frequent uh, biophysical profile has to be taken for the fetus and uh, patient should be on a strict antenatal follow-up with frequent uh, USG obstetric scans that has to be done apart from the regular congenital anomalies that we check like for uh, so this patient was on regular follow-up and it was a planned pregnancy uh, she's a primary, yeah? she's a primary sir. Uh, and her periods were also uh, irregular uh, that is exactly how she was diagnosed to have hypothyroidism but ever since she was put on thyroid uh, thyronom tablets her thyroid profile had normalized but still this has to be kept in mind because it can complicate further pregnancy can lead to uh, mis uh, abortions uh, so, so in 2000 do you anticipate in a sickle cell disease patient becoming pregnant yeah so first of all her pregnancy itself is a hypercoagulable state 
there will be increased uh, feed there, there can be uh, if if the patient ends up with sickle cell crisis then the uh, blood can be a compromise that that is reaching to the uh, fetus that can lead to fetal retardation um basically the, the growth re- yeah growth, growth retardation that whenever your ultrasound examination of the mother mm-hmm. the abdomen and the uterus and baby size that will also be mm-hmm. carried out okay. uh so she was in her third trimester of pregnancy 31 weeks so at this point in time uh, uh um, any bacteriuria or any infections can directly affect the uh, child patient can end up uh, fetus can end up with uh after delivery neonatal sepsis all of these complications has to be anticipated which is why treating the patient has to be uh, mandated before delivery um so apart from this in 2015 she had undergone a blood exchange transfusion and in her obstetric history so far uh, uh she has been given blood twice so but there is no documented hemoglobin drop probably because of generalized tiredness the previous treating doctors have given her uh, she has undergone two uh, blood transfusions in the recent past during this pregnancy term otherwise most of her pregnancy has been uneventful with no uh, evidence of preeclampsia eclampsia gestational hypertension nothing of that sort so far had been detected and her previous obstetric scans also stated single uh, intrauterine pregnancies with uh, no fetal retardation so since you told about a uh, blood transfusion what's the major concern of, or what uh, what is the caution you need to be uh, aware of while giving blood transfusion for a patient in crisis sickle cell crisis uh, basically so sir in sickle cri- cell crisis the hemoglobin becomes sickle cell so even in the smaller um, vessels the uh, it can obstruct the flow so when you give blood that hyperquel no so so basically uh, usually we ha- we set our targets based upon the hemoglobin mm. say uh, we assume that one uh, one pint of uh, brb is going to increase by 0.7 to 1 gram yeah, yeah, approximately 1 gram okay mm. so here what is happening especially where well, yeah, I, pro- i think you will come back to uh, sickle cell crisis you have the splenic sequestration syndrome said out right so especially once you are giving the blood there is a uh, chance of what whatever hemoglobin is trapped in the spleen also to come back to the cir- circulation so the norm is to give 50 percentage of what we usually use okay and then reassess because otherwise it will lead to hyperviscosity syndrome because Hyper the remaining viscosity. hemoglobin is also going to come back into the circulation and will lead to hyperviscosity Hyper so the general norm is if the patient is in crisis give half reassess and then give okay uh-huh. yeah you can and in addition to hemoglobin ferritin level that uh-huh. is also more important uh-huh. and uh, is there any target uh, hematocrit uh-huh. hematocrit uh-huh. always keep 30 for 30 uh-huh. hematocrit is uh, goal is to maintain the 30 it is mm-hmm. not to be too high also okay so um uh also patient had to be undergone in on those scans generally 11 to 13 weeks we do obstetric scans to uh, screen for down syndrome then 18 to 20 for any other con- congenital anomalies then on 28 32 and 37 weeks we check for fetal growth retardation so she was due her 36th week of uh, uh, obstetric scan but so far it had been un- uneventful in fact the, there were no other complications in her uh, pregnancy either including hyperemesis gravidarum nothing of that sort was there but she was kept on strict monitoring and um, she was uh, uh, educated uh, about the uh, complications that could arise during her pregnancy so um, she uh, presented with complaints of generalized weakness and urine tiredness output. urine output renal functions uh, so so uh, in this there's a um, increase for uh, increased chances of sickle cell nephropathy so baseline uh, when she conceives itself a baseline rft has to be taken including the urine protein and protein creatinine ratio uh, because if the patient ends up with preeclampsia or uh, that itself can complicate uh, nephropathy so that has to be uh, baseline has to be assessed and with every antenatal visits her rft has to be checked so in this patient rft in remain normal including the urine protein creatinine ratio all of that bit was normal so the blood pressure uh, see whether these patients may be mostly associated with preeclampsia preeclampsia okay. mm-hmm. 
so she presented with a 2d history of low grade fever uh, more like more on the lines of chills rather than documented fever and along with this she had myalgia fatigue and dysuria evaluated at a local hospital they started her on tablet nitrofurantoin which she was on for about 3 days and then she visited our hospital uh, her urine routine showed evidence of uti with uh, 10 to 12 pus cells and uh, new uh, 4 plus bacteria uh, but uh, urine protein was normal so apart from this uh, here we symptomatically treated her and uh, the other thing in sickle cell anemia or major thing is um, hydration and uh, prevention of hypoxia because sickle cell people if at all uh, they go a little hypoxic then their hemoglobin uh, um, reduces to a sickle form and which is why it will lead to vascular uh, crisis and it can lead in any end organ damage can happen including nephropathy or uh, that vascular uh, microvascular uh, flow can be blocked acute chest syndrome can happen pulmonary embolism first of all pregnancy is a risk factor for pulmonary embolism and dvt over that sickle cell complicates it uh, so the urinary tract infection are like in other normal patients a sickle cell patients so it is very difficult to treat the urinary tract infection it will be recurrent because mm. associated papillary necrosis mm. that is also commonly associated in the sickle cell anemia patient so the main problem with the sickle cell is only vaso occlusive disorder mm. and hemolytic hemolysis so the vaso occlusion can happen in any part of the body mm. so that has to be kept in mind and patient should be started on a dvt prophylaxis regardless so precipitating factors F- hypoxia you don't hypoxia and then uh, any stress infections stress, stress. um infection infe- uh, infection acidosis mm. cold hypothermia so the and the tonic application you should avoid in the periphery uh, upper limb or lower limb trauma or coming for that purpose we better avoid it uh, tonic okay so um, then apart from this hydration so because again uh, hyperviscous blood another cause mm. and uh, dehydration is another cause both the other that's why the hematocrit goat we should Which maintain mean, yeah. so, since you told about hydration what is the choice of fluid rl can so uh, a few concepts are there so basically you need to understand that if the patient is hypovolemic you follow our classical kind of approach of giving crystalloids early normal saline remains the uh, 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 first line of thing but once the patient is becoming euvolemic still you will need to maintain Hydration. hydration in those kind of uh, scenarios you have to opt for half an s okay basically what happens is even your excretion of sodium is hampered because of the sickle cell crisis so once the sodium builds up that again worsens the uh, crisis cycling yeah so, so so because of that half an s remains the choice of fluid once you only may achieve as a maintenance fluid okay, okay so um mostly it will be on the, the the treatment will be more on the lines of preventive uh, aspect rather than the uh, so we are done with this case yeah uh, so she just presented with generalized tiredness and we supportively managed her and she improved uh, uh, was an x-ray taken for this patient x-ray pregnant patient so x-ray. no x-ray ready so again uh, what trimester she was in third trimester so basically can we take an x-ray after first trimester mm. so here again this is one of the common practice which we do that completely avoiding x-rays in pregnant women so mm. for all practical purpose a third trimester lady if the risk is uh, overweighing the benefit you you can proceed with an x-ray with adequate protection mm. basically it is the our major concerns is with the first trimester so okay. if we are suspecting a viral pneumonia kind of picture if diagnosis depends upon an x-ray of course you ca- you are okay with uh, going ahead with a single x-ray and all so even a ct is okay in a pregnant lady if it, if the diagnosis is going to be life changing mm. okay so a single dose of x-ray is not going to be tetrogenic okay Fine. and she was on aspirin so so that has to be stopped 7 days before uh, pregnancy and low molecular weight heparin also has to be initiated because for the same reasons of uh, to prevent pulmonary embolism dvt it's a it's a high risk case so that has to be initiated 7 uh, days uh, post if a patient is going to deliver 
through the vagina or normal delivery then it has to be continued 7 days post vaginal delivery or up to 6 weeks after LSCS so um, patient has to be kept on a regular follow up RFT basically end organ damage sickling has to be monitored and and keep the patient ambulate as ambulatory. much as possible. Um, and like you mentioned sir, blood transfusion only has to be done if at all it's absolutely mandated and under monitoring and her lab investigations were pretty much normal so in, this case, in addition we have to keep in a pleasant circulation to the baby whenever you are doing uh, cross matching and appropriate we always consult with the hematologist so we have to take care of this whether a child can also uh, may develop and compatibility on this things apart from our age mm -hmm. you have to see uh, and lab investigation wise she had a total counts of about 6900 and uh, platelets 178 there is no other issues crp was also like 26 borderline and then um, so she was continued on oral antibiotics itself um, yeah that's pretty much it okay so, with regard to hypothyroidism, mm. uh, what all things you have to keep in mind in a pregnant lady? Hypo uh, met uh, hypothyroidism, basically basal metabolic rate of mm. the body comes down okay. in hypothyroidism. But uh, pa in, in cases of uh, pregnancy, it, it, metabolic demand of the body increases. Okay. So, uh, thyroid profile again has to be monitored because patient can end up with... Uh, thyroid, um, the demand increases of thyroxine. You need so, to for produce this mixedema. Mixedema. So uh, the mixedema airway coma, management uh, we have to keep in this also. Mm. And the mm. cold intolerance. Mm. Very sensitive to all the sedative Sedatives. drugs. So the doses should be reduced. Mm. And then there is a general practice of uh, prophylactic penicillin. So if there is no routine practice of putting the patient on penicillin but if the patient has already been on penicillin previously in view of recurrent bacteria that can be continued but but children definitely there is a role right. ah. okay so coming from an ER perspective uh, uh, what are the what are the emergencies which are usually related to uh, sickle cell disease pulmonary embolism okay. acute chest syndrome okay. uh, so uh, we usually call it as a sickle cell crisis sickle right cell what are the various components of it? it's it's grouping of various kind of uh, circulation right? crisis we have, we have told already uh. one is the spreading sequestration crisis uh. okay second thing is the vena occlusive crisis so what is the vena occlusive crisis that is in the micro vessel scapularies the uh, sickling happens so it will hamper the uh, blood supply to that particular area so and then it can the lead to cyanosis and acute dactylitis okay. pain okay. Patient present with hydration. What's the, what's the choice of analgesic? In uh, uh, you can start with acetaminophen and include uh, opioids with it. You, you, you can upfront start with opioids. opioids. Opioids is the kind of the drug of choice. Uh -huh. Okay. So then, you, then you manage accordingly. Uh -huh. Okay. But NSAIDs is avoided. Yeah. Okay. So that is with venoclusive. Uh -huh. Then you have the splenic sequestration. What happens in splenic sequestration? Same sickling happens there. So the? uh, spleen. Okay. So that will. Um, because of that, the spleen enlarges okay. and uh, in sickle cell, maybe actually, tender, uh, uh, yeah. so the patient's uh, spleen is almost uh, dysfunctional since the age of one year itself. Mm -hmm. So, there is high priority, this high chance of recurrent infections. And whenever mm -hmm. the like, uh, infection happens, it can actually worsen very really bad because of this uh, non functional spleen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Then, then there is a plastic crisis. A plastic. What is a plastic crisis? That is in the bone marrow. Um, they, along with anemia, you will have. Uh, uh, leukopenia, um, thrombocytopenia, so the patient will be more prone to bleeding and infections. Mm -hmm. uh, because same, uh, all, all of that happens because of only sickling. So, so the major thing is sickling because of that patient, if it ends up in the genital area, it can lead to priapism. If it goes to, if sickling happens in the brain, it causes uh, CVA. If it happens in the heart, leads to acute chest syndrome, uh, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary embolism. You told about acute chest syndrome. Where does it happen? Acute chest syndrome again, thorax. It's predominantly in the pulmonary vascular. Mm. Yeah. Hypertension. Okay. Yes. Uh, though you, we say it as ACS and we think about it as you, you so told as heart, but it's typically yeah. in the pulmonary vasculature where it happens. And the hypoxia versus following this. Okay. There's microemboli there and then mm -hmm. goes on from there. Okay. Anything else? The patient may be prone for pulmonary embolism. Mm. So mm. He may even go for the acute respiratory. 
problem so how do you differentiate pulmonary embolism mm-hmm. pulmonary embolism again we can do a screening echo to check for any rir with dilatation mm-hmm. then uh, ecg can show sinus tachycardia with uh, s1 q3 t3 pattern will be seen or uh, x rays will have that hampton some all those typical signs will be there for pulmonary embolism sir thank you chest pain syndrome acute chest syndrome pulmonary hypertension that will be there so a patient will have uh, hypoxia uh, worsening distress, dyspnea dyspnea uh, and saturation will be dropping both for the thing in addition if non pregnant xray if you are taking infiltrates mm-hmm. infiltration will be pulmonary infiltration this is a pregnant lady and the service will definitely we have to take we can defer the x-ray mm-hmm. so the differential diagnosis you have to keep both mm-hmm. these things in addition to myocardial ischemic changes are infarction also yes sir that is also the possibility we have to rule out as far as this chest cup mm-hmm. pain is concerned and all these three things you have to keep in mind mm-hmm. and because of that sickle nephropathy patient can end up with hypertension mm-hmm. and pregnancy they can lead to preeclampsia and eclampsia complications also and the common presentation to your will be with an infection itself mm-hmm. okay so you told about penicillin prophylaxis if penicillin mm-hmm. is allergic or something what will be the second line any idea and erythromycin erythromycin okay anything else you know so overall complications if you are looking at uh, one could be acute chest syndrome then the patient can present with bone and joint pain can be in the presentation then recurrent infections then acute cva or even hepatic disease or even renal disease can be caused and also the patient can other uh, symptoms like uh, priapism or also maybe pregnancy complications and all that can be present so basically sickle cell anemia is actually an, uh, an abnormal hemoglobin which is actually received by the hereditary transmission so it is mainly by the parental transmission and any stress it could be hypoxia or any hypotension or any dehydration any stress can actually cause sudden sickling of the uh, um, hemoglobin causing it to hemo- go into hemolysis the presentation will either be just anemia or maybe like a vaso occlusion uh, sequelae it could uh, occlude any part of the body causing further complication so coming to ear a patient who is having a prior prior history the one thing we have to think about is the patient may be in a uh, hypothrombotic state so we have to uh, give adequate hydration in the initial stage itself and also whenever the patient is going into a stage of infection uh, the thing is actually in the early stage of life itself the splenic will become uh, non functional because of recurrent hemolysis and it will clog the spleen so it will be non functional so one thing is if it is a child we have to uh, make sure the child has got adequate immunization in the early stage so also optional immunization which can also be given in this child because of the chance of high risk of infection so there is an adult patient we have to take it as an emergency medical emergency even if it is a very simple infection the patient need to be admitted and further treated as an it basis and again the uh, thrombotic complications depending on the presentation we have to treat accordingly and also if the patient admitting for a long time we have to early start for this dvt and all other prophylaxis should be started in early itself even compared to other normal patients and then sickle cell crisis again coming to that uh, it can present with like multiple areas it can be affected and the main thing again will be like hydration then pain management and also to hypoxia uh, then if the patient is having like hypoxia or any circulatory compromise it need to be addressed as early as possible and immunization and sir vaccination whenever necessary transfusion mm. appropriate transfusion oxygen the carriage mm. it should be improved mm. in mm. case necessity that so mm. and one more thing retina mm. examination initially arrange for an ophthalmologist to examine mm. uh, proliferative type of retina no for the bill so treatment wise are mainly uh, since you told about uh, immunization so next extra thing is that covid booster dose mm. is must for like that is one subgroup of patients where it was mandated mm. initially sickle itself mm. okay sickle cell so treatment wise hydroxyurea is one of the most commonly used treatment it can actually one uh, reduce the thromboembolic complications and also control the pain so it is usually recommended in those kind of patients and also what's the dose of hydroxyurea uh, dose so usually hmm. we start with 15 mg per kg per day hmm. okay and then I, i believe it was continued for close to 2 uh, to 3 weeks and hmm. then you increase the dose by 5 mg per kg per day hmm. every 3 months hmm. okay to our target dose will be 35 mg per kg per day hmm. that's the maximum dose yeah. but uh, how will you assess for toxicity what will be the signs of toxicity what does it do to the marrow uh, separation yeah. yeah 
so basically you have to look at the cbc only mm-hmm. okay and uh, the toxic levels will be when the wbc falls less than uh, 2000 mm-hmm. your hemoglobin is less than 5.6 your the thrombocytopenia i believe the cut off is 60000 or something mm-hmm. so basically you look for all cell suppression so mm-hmm. if that is there definitely you need to mm-hmm. withhold the drug mm-hmm. okay what is the lifespan of a normal rbc and sickle cell normal it is 120 120 120 120 normal sickle cell ഹിസ്റ്റോക്ക് <laughs> 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 any current condition of multi organ failure or any organ dysfunction the acs is also there no yeah, acute coronary syndrome acs also and also acute chest syndrome we have yeah. to give the transfusion and again uh, uh, this uh, will giving the transfusion we have to go for a proper cross matching leuco reduction and everything should be given and also try to avoid any for the complications regarding to the transfusion and also one of the curative options we have is actually uh, hematopoietic cell uh, stem cell transplantation there is one curable uh, this treatment we have available for sickle cell mm. Not so gene therapy is under evaluation, but not so far. We don't have any proper vaccine so far. Okay. Since we just mentioned about uh, uh, cell suppression, uh, mm. what is the role of GCSF? Uh, GCSF. Uh, this is only if it is relatively contraindicated. Uh, not so, going to help. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not only not going to help. Uh, GCSF is uh, found to be one of the precipitating factors for crisis. Mm-hmm. So GCSF ideally in sickle cell should be used with caution. Mm-hmm. Okay. So entire. Uh, very important period it should be carefully taken care of mm-hmm. so what are the complications there this is apart from the pulmonary embolism there may be chances fat and mm-hmm. amniotic fluid embolism is common this mm-hmm. in sickle cell is fat embolism is one of the common entities mm-hmm. 